like, hello. And I just realized in that moment that, that I basically kind of have to live in the, the basement of my parents' house for the rest of my life. And the only way that I could find a way to sleep was solitude. I started getting desperate. That was like nine years. I started getting pain in my wrists. I had to be, I had to be fed. I had to be driven. The, the only thing that I prayed for was that I, that I didn't end my life that day. So this is a very abbreviated lead up to what happened in the first episode when I got to see another part of reality and, and uh, what's called a Kundalini awakening. Now, after the diagnosis, uh, I went to the medication for about three days and I was staggering around. And then I went windsurfing with my friend Brad and his girlfriend Angela was there and she said, hello, Ava. And I remember going like, hello. And I just realized in that moment that, that I basically kind of have to live in the, the basement of my parents' house for the rest of my life if I was going to stay on this medication. I knew that I knew within my heart that I wasn't crazy because I'd also been to the South African infantry and, and I'd been through so many adverse um, times in my life that, that I'd made it through that, that I thought, well, it had to have just been the magic mushrooms that I wasn't actually crazy, which this guy thought I was. So I wasn't going back to him and I decided, no, I'm, I'm going to study. You know, decided to never shared with anyone and then when i started studying i just couldn't sleep i just couldn't find a way to sleep I, I would sleep about two hours a night and then catch up and just sleep the whole weekend and over those ne next uh, six years i tried everything and the only way that i could find a way to sleep was solitude was to actually spend five hours a day in complete solitude just basically looking at the ceiling um I could actually spend up to three weeks in complete solitude, especially after like first year exams and um, after any sort of intense, stressful experience, even after like three days of really good waves, I'd have to spend three days in complete solitude um, to, to let my brain slow down enough so that I could sleep. Because I hadn't spoken to anyone about it and because I was living an unauthentic life, but actually living a lie and it especially affected interpersonal relationships because I had to lie to my girlfriend when you start lying, um, this is what I discovered, or deceiving, um, your brain starts deceiving you. And there's also a subconscious punishment mechanism that I talk about in later episodes. Then I went to Dublin. I started practicing in Dublin, did that for a year. And then I tried to take a year off to try to get over this, like having to spend so much time in solitude. I found basically throughout this whole experience is whenever I kind of fell away from close interpersonal relationships and more into sort of a competitive goal oriented mindset that was whenever things started getting really bad and then I discovered spirituality and um, so that kind of got me thinking like maybe there's more to life than this and also I started getting desperate that was like nine years of having to live my life in solitude and kind of like an alcoholic um when you've tried everything else to, to break this habit. Um, I had tried everything else and not many people know this, but in the sort of 12 step program of alcoholi alcoholism, you have to um, accept that you have got no power, that this power, which to me was insomnia. That's what I believed it was, but actually it was the fear that I was insane. But what I believed was um, this power of insomnia was, it was more powerful than me. I tried everything and it was like nine, nine and a half years. And um, so then that's when you start calling to God, you know, like, can you help me maybe? And that's what I did. And although I was still very, very, very skeptic. And um, and then, sure, there's uh, some really personal stuff that's, that happened that actually proved to me that the existence of God and so then I started my own practice in my hometown and kind of got really, really busy. My first idea was that if I could meditate really well, then I could cut the solitude down to like half an hour a day. So then I could live as a normal person. Except what I was doing was I was, now I'd got so much into spirituality that I was meditating four or five hours a day and then spending the, the rest of the time in contemplation. So once again, I was moving away from, from friendships and relationships and sort of uh, really sort of moving towards spirituality. I started getting pain in my wrists. 
and it got more it got worse and worse until a point where i got i had to be um I had to be fed. I had to be driven everywhere. I had to find my parents. They had just moved to Switzerland. I had to find them. So it was, um, and then I just, I just stopped sleeping. I just couldn't sleep. I slept maybe one and a half or maybe two, two and a half hours max a night. And I woke up in the middle of the night. I was clawing at the bed. And I realized that there was something deeply subconscious that was, that was making me do this. It got to a point where I actually had to, the only thing that I prayed for was that I that I didn't end my life that day. And then as the sun was setting, that was my one prayer was that I hadn't done it that day. Because I had so many suicidal thoughts that just overtook every thought. And I was just I was kind of like, no, this isn't due, you know. And then but when you're in that sort of state, um you can't you're not no longer the master of your own mind. The the, the suicidal thoughts just just totally overtake you. But it had taken those 10 years to develop because I tried everything and I was basically living in a prison of solitude. And But I didn't realize that that was the problem, I, you know, because it was such a slow progression. I just wanted the use of my hands back and I wanted to be able to sleep. And I didn't know what was going on. I went to many specialists and they didn't know what was going on. And then um, that was when the really interesting stuff started happening. And I'm going to carry on with that with the next episode. So um, you can join me then. Thank you.